Today's tutorial is on resizing and sharpening your images for Instagram, as well as how to create an action in Photoshop so that we can do this all in one click. So let's pop over into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm done my edit, and at this point, I'm ready to export and upload to Instagram. So what do we do next? Well, I could simply just export full resolution, upload to Instagram. However, Instagram will heavily compress this as it's way too big. So what I can do to counter that is I can resize that and sharpen that now and then import that to Instagram. So just a few things to note. First, I'm going to create an action for a sharpening, and this will be for vertical images. And since we're dealing with the vertical image here, the recommended size for the long edge here, the height would be 1,350 pixels. And if you're working with the horizontal landscape image, the recommended size would be 1080 pixels. So first let's create our action. What we'll do is we'll go to window, we'll go to actions, and then we'll go down to this button right here and click that it'll create a new action. We'll name this sharpen, in my case, 1350 pixels, and I'll click record. Next up, we need to go to image, then we need to go to duplicate and click OK. And you can see that this is just created a new window so that we're not interfering with our original edit. Now we'll go to layer, we'll go to the bottom and we'll click on flatten image and click OK. Okay, so here's where the fun begins. So now we're gonna go up to image and we're gonna go to image size. And here we're gonna change the height as this is the long edge. Now you would think we would change this to 1,350 pixels now, but we're not gonna do that yet. So what we need to do is we need to take our target size and times that by 1.67. So in this case, I'll go 1,350 times 1.67, which will give me roughly 2,254. I also wanna make sure that I have by cubic smoother enlargement selected, and then I'll click OK. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this on a PC, that would be Control J on a Mac, Command J. And what we'll do is we'll go to Filter and we'll go down to Sharpen and we'll click Sharpen. Now I'm gonna add a mask. So I'm gonna click here and create a white mask. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this again, Control J or Command J, go back up the Filter, Sharpen at the top, and we'll do that one more time. Go back up the filter, sharpen, and then we're done. So now I'm gonna deselect this. I'm gonna go back to image, image size, and now I'm gonna change the height to the target of 1350 and click OK. At this point, we can stop our action, so we can click stop here. Now I'm going to zoom in real quick. And I'm going to deselect. So let me just explain this real quick. I've deselected these two layers and at the bottom, we just have our resize 1350 image without any sharpening. Now each layer is going to have additional sharpening. So if I turn this on once, you'll notice some sharpening here. If I click it again, extra sharpening, and then a third time, a lot of sharpening. Now you, you would probably only use this for images above 2000 pixels and so forth. So for 1080 or 1350, I'm only really using the first and second layer for this. Now, having said that, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna close this out completely, click no. So now that we've made our action, we've closed the window out, let's see how this works in practice. So let's just say we're done our edit and now we're ready to resize and sharpen and export. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to window, I'm gonna go back to actions and right here you can see sharpen 1350 pixels. And if I click over here, you can actually see all the steps we've just created. So at this point, we're just gonna click the play button and it's gonna run through all the steps that we've just created in one click so that we don't have to do this again. 
Okay, perfect. So that worked pretty smoothly. We clicked one button, it ran all the steps in our action and we're right back to where we left off. So let me show you how I would go about this. I'm gonna zoom right back in. Now for images of this size, as I said, I'm only really using the first two layers. So each image might be slightly different on how I approach it, but generally speaking, I'll deselect everything. I'll turn the first layer back on, go to the mask, and just toggle it on and off to see where the sharpening is being applied. Now, sometimes I just let the first layer ride at 100%. I don't do any masking, and then I'll move on to the second layer and do more selective sharpening. Um, but let's just say for the sake of this tutorial, matter of fact, if I zoom in, I can see a little bit of haloing here on the uh, edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a black brush at 100% opacity. And on this layer, on the first layer, I'm just gonna paint out the sky as well as the edges for the cliff side here to remove any haloing and just make the background a little smoother. As I said, I like to have selective sharpening. I don't wanna just slap it on everywhere. Um, for instance, the sky doesn't need to be sharp here. Um, and as a matter of fact, you can create more depth in your image by doing this. Um, obviously things at the front will be sharper and it'll be less so as you go further back. And then once you get to the background, I want it to be a bit um, blurry or out of focus. Again, it's just creating more depth. So we've removed the sharpening from the background and the cliff side. Okay, so let's just say that I want the foreground to be a bit sharper, but I don't want it to be applied everywhere else. So I'll select a second layer of sharpening and you can see it's quite a lot. So first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inverse this layer, Control I or Command I, make that black. Now we'll get a white brush at 100% opacity and I'm just gonna paint then the foreground area. Now for this example, I'm not gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna make a rough selection. Like that. Yep, and that'll be good enough. So if we toggle that on, we can see that it's only being applied to the immediate foreground area. However, it is a bit strong. And what I usually do is I'll drop it down to zero and then I'll just gradually slide it up and see what it looks like. You see, when we get to 100%, we start losing the yellows and the reds, and we don't want that. So I'll bring it up just slightly to the point where I notice some desaturation, and then I'll pull back a little bit. Okay, so now what I might do just to counter that is I might create a hue and saturation layer. I'll increase the reds and the yellows just a bit And again, I don't want to apply this everywhere. So what I'll do is actually I'll delete the mask here. If I go to the layer before and I go to that mask, if I hold down control or command and then click on it, it'll select that mask. So when I go back up to hue and saturation, I can click the mask button and you can see we have the same mask as the layer below, which means we're only targeting the saturation to the foreground. If I toggle it on and off, you can see a slight increase in saturation, maybe it's a bit too much. So I'll just bring it down a bit, maybe, I don't know, 60%, toggle it on and off. Yeah, and that's fine. So if I were to zoom out, this would be our final product. I've added two layers of sharpening. One was just for the foreground and then to compensate for the loss of saturation, I added a little bit back and just targeted the foreground. So at this point, I'm ready to export, I go to file, export, export as. Now I'll change this to JPEG. Make sure that embed color profile is selected. You can see the height is 1350. Now I'll hit export all, and then we're ready to upload to Instagram. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial. I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like button, and tune in for future videos.